Hi, welcome back to the Trial by Jenna Fire podcast series. My name is Jennifer Butterfield, your host, and today I have a very special guest, Carly DeFelice. Welcome, Carly. I am so excited to have you on. Um, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. So I am Carly. I am the founder of Best Money Class Ever. It's a live and virtual four-week personal finance class. Um, but yeah, I studied finance and I actually graduated in December of 2008, conveniently when the entire financial market completely crashed. <laughs> um, I just remember like I owed about like $35,000 in student loans and a car loan, just like walking into my finance professor's office hours, just kind of like, what am I going to do about like this whole job mm -hmm. <laughs> situation? Um, and with a lot of intention, I ended up paying everything off. And then I saved my first 100K by the time I was 26. Wow. And um, I am super proud because during that time, I was only earning around the average household income, like 50 or $60,000. So um, it was a crazy journey. But I thought, hey, if I can do it, anyone can. with just a little bit of an education and a solid plan. Um, so I created best money class ever. And I totally geek out on personal finance. I love it. Okay. So just for those tuning in, um, I was out, uh, visiting my, my boyfriend's parents over the Thanksgiving yeah. break and I get this DM from him and it, he sends me this article. It's from CNBC. On yeah. Carly. And, it, yes. it, it, it's <laughs> her and I, we're going to link, uh, that in the video and the yeah. photo in the description, but um, so cool that you had a national network, you know, contact you about coming yes. on and featuring you and your personal finance journey. And um, I was so, I was like, I wonder if she'd like to come on the podcast. She's in Austin. And I just feel so honored that you would have time and feel interested in coming and talking to me about this. So I'm, I'm just really glad to have you here and thanks so much. Yeah. For Thank and, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It's definitely been the last few weeks have been a little bit crazy, a little bit busy, <laughs> but I'm just like loving it. So I geek out over all things personal finance. So if people are like, tell your story. I'm like, yes, yes. sure. Yeah. Give me a microphone. Yes, um, I love it. Well, I, I'm always so curious and we were like starting to get into this before we hit record, but I was like, no, we got to save it for the podcast. Yes. So I'm always curious. I ask all of my guests this question. Um, what was the conversation around personal finance like in your home growing up? Yeah. Okay. So funny story. Um, my mom was literally balancing her paycheck when she went into labor. And so I always joke, like I was born into this world for personal finance. And like most people, there wasn't an actual conversation. Nothing was really said, but it was a lot of seeing and so I saw my parents, um, literally that model of paying attention to where their money's going. At the time, my parents had a barbecue restaurant and unfortunately the restaurant was going under. So yeah. I learned the value of be, being really mindful of where the dollars and cents are going. Um, I don't know if you've seen like the TikTok trends of like this couples out and like they're going to eat and it's like a boyfriend and girlfriend meeting the family. And like everybody at the table is like an order water kind of person. And the boyfriend is like, I'll have a diet Coke. And it's like <laughs> really <laughs> uncomfortable. You know, like my family was like the order water kind of family. Like we rarely went out to eat when we did. It was like tap water. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so again, nothing was like verbalized, but it was always like kind of just like this atmosphere of, okay, let's live below our means. We're not going to like blow hundreds of dollars on like random frivolous spending. Um, and so that's kind of really been ingrained in me since a really, really like literally birth. Wow. <laughs> literally. Okay. Yeah. So crazy. I love it. It's funny that you say that I have two things to just spin off that because my mom was negotiating a contract when she went into labor with me. And oh my gosh. And they were like, you need to put the phone down, ma'am. You're like, you're oh my gosh. two minutes apart and you're going to have the baby. <laughs> but that's like, we've got to stop. <laughs> yeah, I know. Totally. I'm like, man. And the other thing that comes to mind is, you know, I think, and this is kind of our, 
I'm just thinking, you know, there's a lot, I think, that goes into uh, this consumer culture, right? Where um, mm -hmm. I think there's probably like this uh, discontentedness that a lot of people mm -hmm. experience around money. And so like, you know, hearing you talk about going out to eat with your parents and like everybody ordering water, like my first thought yeah. is like, <laughs> and they were content with it, you know? And yeah. Like, experience like they're living in a joyous way without the stuff right and like so I'm curious totally. like is that an accurate perception of like their their nature I would say like I'm curious yeah so for me I I truly believe in spending money where your values are so it isn't all about like deprivation and like mm -hmm sucking any joy out of right <laughs> your life like you know if you want the diet coke get girl get you that diet coke right. kind of a thing but um uh -huh. but <laughs> um but or you know the iced coffee the lattes whatever um so i'm all about spending money where your values are and so for my family like yeah cokes are nice and dandy, but is it that healthy? Is it that great? Is it going to spark that joy for us? Not really. So growing up, we did value, however, as a family, a lot of travel and experiences. Yeah. Um, and so that's where my parents, I saw my parents spend money on with the family and that really shaped me in, into learning that it's not buying this random thing at Target that's going to give me joy. It's not, uh, you know, the little things don't really matter. It's the experiences, it's the relationships, it's the connections with people and the memories that you make. And so that has really, really stuck with me. Um, since I was young, traveled and throughout my twenties. And, and now that I'm in my thirties, I've been to over 20 countries wow. and I would not trade that experience for anything. I just so. love that. That's incredible. And, you know, I think so yeah, this leads into my next question because, you know, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there's like this pivotal point where it's like, okay, you're in your family of origin, you've adopted your family's values, but like, mm -hmm. I don't know, we all kind of go through our our own version of a teenage rebellion of some kind, but mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, so when did you start to adopt like your own money mindset? And like, did it that differ in any way from your parents or was it like, yeah. pretty streamlined as you started to kind of create your own mindset around money. Yeah. So there's a lot that we can unpack here. Let's do it. Like, um, let's unpack this little therapy session here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so somehow, some way along the journey, I really grabbed on to the idea of wanting to earn my own income and to save that and also invest. So I probably started wor working as a babysitter when I was 12, I would pick up soccer games to ref. And then whenever I was 18, right before I went to college, I started doing a summer sales internship. It was direct sales as in face to face, but it was literally like door to door. Mm -hmm. And so uh, before even I went to University of Texas in Austin, we're both in Austin, before my first summer at school, I spent over 80 hours a week hitting the payment, selling door to door. <laughs> um, wow. And so I really, really valued as a female, as a young woman, just having my own money, mm -hmm. earning my money, and then also saving that. And then uh, I literally, I was probably like 18 or 19 when I learned the finance concept time value of money, which is a dollar saved now is going to be worth more later because right. of interest earned. And so I was like, all right, sign me up. How do I, let's start investing. Um, and kind of like the story with C CNBC, I think why it went viral is because um, most people think like, oh, I'll start investing when I make more money. And for me, I mean, that first summer, I probably earned like $5,500, which is a lot. But if you do the math, like the number of hours I earned, it was like less than like minimum wage. Yeah. Um, and so even with that few thousand that I made, I, I invested that and that really made 
it like changed everything mm-hmm. for sure. Wow. Mm-hmm. And you were like, you were 18. Yeah. 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 No kidding. I mean, I've done the math. Like I, I mean, I don't know what returns or whatever, but I mean, just to see, yeah. I mean, to understand compound interest at that age, I think is one thing. I mean, but to be <laughs> investing and, and utilizing those principles in a way that's working for you and your money's making money, it's like, that can be life changing. Like I, I've mm. I've worked with yeah. some younger women, um, and you know they're in their early twenties, and I'm like, okay, well, um, you can spend eight hundred dollars a month on like beauty yeah. products and services and all of that, like nails and blowouts and <laughs> eyelashes, all the things. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And also, if you invest that in like a Roth IRA or like low low risk index funds. Uh, here's what that could look like, you know, I mean, I don't, I know the lashes have a pretty high ROI, you know, but (laughs) like, look at these numbers, but wow, that is incredible that you were set up for success like that. I'm just, I'm so impressed and I'm curious because it really, I mean, it speaks to like how much you have gone against the grain. Um, I would say, I mean, I would say most of our society is like, um, driven by this this culture of of more and more and more and like also like I don't know like fast fashion and just things like yeah not being built to last right and um, so I'm curious you know what are some of the pressures that you've experienced around consumerism and like also as yeah. a woman yeah well kind of funny thing is I actually did fall for consumerism. So I earned the income, I saved, I invested. Um, I did this crazy summer internship uh, and it was 100% commission. So I learned real fast the connection between work and money. If you work, you make money. If you don't, you don't make any any money. Um, and so the first summer, my sales were so-so. The next summer, you know, improved. The next summer I became a selling machine. I was a top sales rep with an Inc. 500 company, meaning one of the fastest 500 companies in the nation. And I was a top sales rep. So I was a junior in college and I kid you not, I earned $63,000. I mean, like, like, I'm, I know it was crazy. So it was a summer and then I ended up taking off the fall semester. So it was over a period of five months, but still that was like an insanely amount of you know money to earn mm-hmm. at a very young age. Mm-hmm. And at the time it was a home security business, very male dominated. And the company ended up giving a car bonus to the top sales rep. So they gave us $500 to go towards any car that you wanted. And all of the frugality, all the like, everything just went completely out the door. (laughs) Um, I felt a a lot of people like when they first start making that income, you feel a sense of entitlement of like, I've worked so long, like I finally deserve this. Um, And so I went out and I thought I had to have like the image of success as well. You know, like, oh, I made this money. I have to show people that I am successful. So I went out and I bought not just any car. I bought a brand spanking new white Mercedes Benz. And so I (laughs) roll up to campus and I'm like, Hey, like, what's up? Um, (laughs) um, literally like ludicrous. Um, but I thought at the time I was like, you know, I worked hard. I deserve this what could possibly go wrong? There was a car bonus of $500. The car payments were 560. I'm like, win, win. That was actually 2007. I kid you not. Literally like one month later, one month later, the company went completely bankrupt. Oh, Bankrupt. And so the company had all the accolades like Inc. 500, fastest growing, all, all the things. And so that was so pivotal, pivotal. I don't know if that's a word. That was a pivotal moment in my financial life 
where I was like, no way anymore. Like I am not going to do things to just look rich. I wanted to truly like build wealth. And that shaped, that totally shaped, shaped me. But uh, from that experience, I realized what happened to me happens to a lot of Americans. You go from like hardly making anything to again, you finally make that money. And instead of paying off the debt that you do have, you just take out more debt. Right. So crazy whirlwind experience. Totally. Learned so much though. Oh my gosh. That's, I mean, there's so much I want to say about all of that. I mean, first of all, I mean, I think to especially being an, a woman in this day and age mm -hmm. it's like i do feel like we have pressure to look successful right and be mm -hmm. successful and um that pressure is real but then there's also like this added pressure of being a beautiful woman right and it's like so all mm -hmm. the things that come with that too and um you know i think there's the beauty industry itself is like i mean a whole different ball game but i i think too it's just like the image of success there's so many people that make well over six figures and are still living paycheck to paycheck and so mm -hmm. i'm curious like can you talk a little bit about i'm sure there are probably some people listening that probably are in fear and anxiety about how they're going to pay their car bill or you know that their mm -hmm. company they're going to get laid off or whatever how did you kind of navigate that how did I navigate? Like down. Say that again. I mean, like in terms of so, what'd you do with the Mercedes? I mean, if the yeah. bankrupt, like how did that yeah. look? I mean, coming yeah. from somebody who has had a car repossessed, um, and yeah. like goodness, that's like rolling off my credit. But you know, it's like that's a very real thing. And I think I just read a news yeah. article about um more and more people are starting to not be able to pay their car bills, like just in the past yeah. year. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm curious, like, how did you navigate that? And like, can you speak yeah. to like the fear and anxiety that might have yeah. been happening? <laughs> so from that moment, I was just like, just kind of made like an internal vow, like never again am I gonna get wrapped up into things and um, appearances. I don't care about that. Like that stuff does not matter. And so um, kind of to go back in that spot where I was, I had a lot of feelings like people are probably having right now. If you're like with a car payment that's too expensive, or if you have a mortgage that you're overextended and your house poor, you probably feel the same feelings that I felt, which was just a lot of anger and frustrations and kind of like overwhelm. Mm -hmm. And so I really recommend for people to use those feelings because feelings are very powerful. Uh, pain especially is a powerful force. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like, like any kind of rock bottom moment is truly your foundation mm -hmm. um, to rebuild your life. So if anyone is in those situations, I want to encourage you, you can turn things around. Um, it's not too late. You're not too old. The mistakes that you made in your twenties in college, you don't have to spend the rest of your life paying for them. So my specific story of like how I turned things around is I, like I said, from the get go, I studied finance. You know, I graduated soon after that. I, I went to my finance professor's office hours cause she knew my story. She knew, yeah. wow, Carly did really well she has this experience. And so, you know, the finance companies weren't hiring everything, like the banks were going under, it was like financial mayhem. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, why don't you go out and just start your own company, your own home security company? And wow. never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined like going from college student to entrepreneur that wasn't like on my radar, but I really couldn't think of a good reason like why why not um the one problem was is i was like hmm, well who's gonna do the installs and so at the heat of the recession i literally rolled up my sleeves and trained myself to install home security systems so um 
So I did go from college student to entrepreneur. I owe that $35,000 to student loans and a car loan and pay, I did pay it all off. Um, and then save my nest egg. And so, um, totally one of those things that during that time period, literally all I made was around 50, $60,000. And so, um, so there's a lot of tips, um, that we can go into, I guess the biggest thing that I would say is just using those emotions to kind of, um, spark the desire for something different. Yeah. Wow. And it's so rewarding too. Like, I just know, um, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Totally. Cause I mean, it can be so overwhelming. I mean, when people are facing like tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars debt, you know, it's like, how are they going to get out from under that? And it's like, you know, a lot of it, like pay- bankruptcy isn't even an option for some people, you know, and student I'm loans, to go yeah. to, but it's like, you know, with student loans. Right. And, and these things that it's just, um, it can be so overwhelming. I'm so, I'm so grateful to have you on here because your experience is just so valuable. And, um, I want to talk to you. Okay. So the, the best money class ever. So you started yes. that in 2012. Um, yes. Tell me about that. Tell me about the inspiration behind it, the inception of it and, um, talk about what it offers. I'm curious to hear about Mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. So I was doing my home security business and one day I was driving to my office, AKA at the local Barnes and Noble, cause there was free internet. <laughs> and here in Austin, Texas, like at the time there was like this investment center, like a fidelity and literally on an impulse, I was just like, Skirt. and I like went to the investment center and I just walked in bright eyed. And I was just like, Hey, I'm Carly. I want to be a financial advisor and started interviewing um, to be a financial advisor. So I had the finance degree from a top business school and, um, I was really good with managing, you know, my own money. And surprisingly though, I started interviewing and one company was like, well, why do you want to work with us? And I was incredibly naive, bright eyed, young. And I just genuinely was like, well, I want to help educate young adults manage money. And, um, quickly the rejection letters just like rolled on in and i found out the very very hard way that in the investment world they want you to bring in high net worth clients and sell investments sell insurance um, and that's not at all what i wanted so with coffee in hand my laptop took what i learned studying finance and then created best money class ever so yeah I love that. I totally understand too. I mean, I worked in as support in tax law. And so we, I mean, high net worth was like taxable estates, you know, and we worked with a lot of those financial advisors and it's like the educating people on financial literacy. I mean, yeah, you're not going to see the return as somebody who's helping those people in the beginning, but like the rewarding aspect of it. I mean, and I mean, for somebody like me, I mean, I, I totally relate with that, but like, you know, there wasn't, I don't want to say my mom who was a single mom, you know, Mm -hmm. didn't educate me on financial literacy, but like, to be fair, like, I'm not sure, like she even had the resources, you know, or like Mm -hmm. understanding about a lot of those things. And so it's like, that's incredible. Um, dude in the rejection, that's hard. Yeah to realize all of that. And so, okay. So you started in, in 2012, uh, tell me about like your first class and, and, um, you know, what, what do you like, what are, what's your main demographic and like, how you, how have you grown and scaled with it? Um, and tell me about experiences too. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just like, so excited. I was so excited about personal finance and debt payoff and like budgeting. Like it still didn't like register like, oh, this is like 
nails on chalkboard for like most people. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, people are just going to be like lining up and like, right. good morning, America is going to be calling. This is going to be like the best money class ever. Like, <laughs> and um, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I freaking love financial statements and everyone's like, I get what? it. I know. They're like, like this. <laughs> Excel, yes, spreadsheets. You know, like, like what? Um, so, so at first it was like it was super grassroots. I started having like one by one kind of a thing, mm -hmm. and I remember I hosted my class at like an apartment community. It was like a, a random apartment in Austin, Texas, that my class was like a, an event. And <laughs> like by the little mail center, people would like get their mail and I had flyers out and I was standing there with a little table and I was like, Hey, I'm Carly. Best oh. money class ever is coming up. And, <laughs> and this that. one guy was like, Oh my gosh, I've been looking for something just like this. And he went on and on. He was like, my student loans are up to here. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I have a 401k plan, but I don't know what any of it means. I haven't invested. I don't know. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. I'll see you in class. And he was like, well, actually. And I was like, he was like, I can't make it. And I was like, come again. Like, I thought you just said this was everything that you're looking for and you need this and you're so stressed and He's this like, is well, the best money class ever. <laughs> this is the best one ever. <laughs> and, uh, he's like, well, actually, Carly, your class is on the same night as my favorite happy hour. And I was just <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Priorities. Um, and then, like, <laughs> probably like a month later, I was out, like, grocery shopping and it hit me. I was like, wait a second, why not grab a drink and talk about money? And so money is so taboo, so awkward. So what better way to break the financial ice than over a beer or a glass of wine? So I actually then started doing my classes at bars. Love it. Um, and one by one, people would come to the class, small group after small group. And then I really got into public speaking. So at this point, I had been a guest speaker with about 65 different organizations, universities, uh, businesses like Dress for Success, Girl Scouts, UT, TCU, NYU. And then the pandemic hit. And that was when I was like, oh, 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 snap. Live events, speaking engagements completely shut down. And so that's when I turned to... Um, creating short little tidbits online. So um, on Instagram and TikTok and uh, doing my class now virtually and also as a way that I can reach anybody um, can take it. Same principle, grab a drink at home, kind of think of it as like an evening, like carved out just for you. Get ready for like some personal finance knowledge bombs. <laughs> the best money class ever though. I'm just so, like, I can't. Yeah. I, so relatable that you're like it really is like nails on a chalkboard for a lot of people everybody has their hang-ups with money and i i went yeah. through the same experience with launching trial by jenna fryer because i'm like everybody's gonna be so excited to talk about money and they're gonna be just jumping at the you know it's just like wow total opposite of what i thought because it's like Nobody wants to look at their debt, you know? I mean, there's like not a good day to wake up and be like, yeah, let's talk to like $85,000 in student loans today. You yeah. Know? It's so relatable. Okay, so how big are the classes now? Yeah. So, well, first off, I did want to say um, once people make that decision, they're like, mm -hmm. you know what? I need to do something different. Like what I'm doing right now isn't working and I don't want to live like this anymore. <laughs> um, is again, when, when people I, I've found kind of like trigger and be like, you know what, 
So I do tend to work with lots of highly educated people. So we're talking like young architects or engineers, lawyers, you know, people who have college degrees, sometimes like an eye doctor with like medical debt. Um, and also, you know, military families or teachers. Um, but the thing is, is these are smart people. Our generation is more educated than any other generation before with all these degrees and advanced degrees. So a lot of people do get to this point where they're like, you know what, this is impacting me like every day. Yeah. So instead of just like living in denial, talk about recovery, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. First step is like admitting you have a problem right. and that's when change can occur. Right. So a lot of people get to this moment where they're like, you know what? I don't want to live like this anymore. There's a gotta be a better way. Like I'm a smart person. I want to be smart with my money, my future, my finances, this matters. So, um, so yeah, one by one <laughs> I've helped people. So over the years, um, I've probably had almost, this is over like a decade, <laughs> Uh, about 2000 people go through either my class or my live events through all the speaking engagements. Oh yeah. my gosh. You're actualizing your dreams. That the I know. Offer you. Oh my gosh. Yes. So cool. I mean, really. And I totally get it. The pain outweighs the pleasure, right? Like the, yes. the, the uh, payoff that people get from the impulsive spending or whatever the bad habit yeah. is suddenly is no longer um, valuable enough because they have felt enough pain about it. And that is incredible. So, oh man, now I want to hear about like one of the most uh, like profound experience, like just transformations with people. Can you share something? Yeah. Like that? In an anonymous, yeah. anonymous way, but I'm curious. No, like no, no. Um, so the, the thing about what I do um, is I get fired up when I work with people. And yes. I always, I'm like, my goal for everyone that I work through with my class is to pay off all of your debt, excluding a mortgage within 36 months or less. And wow. in my class, I'm like, girl, when you do that, you give me a call and you let me know. And I'll be like, get it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> like I am like cheering you on. And so amazing. what like hypes me up is I'll you know, say I'm like having a bad day, whatever. And then I'll get like this email and this is like random. And I'm like, oh snap. And they're like, I just paid off all my debt. And I'm like, yes, this is why I do what I do. Oh um, my gosh. So uh, one story that comes to mind is I had a newlywed couple, um, mm -hmm. again, super smart people. One uh, the girl, she was like an instructional design, like learning kind of job. And then the husband was an engineer. And so they got married, they merged their finances and they told me their story. It's published on my blog. So it's not like anonymous or anything like that. Um, and so they combined their finances together. They owed about $3,000 a month was going towards debt every single month. And they're like, Hmm, life would be a lot better <laughs> without $3,000 going towards debt every month. And so Matthias, he was the engineer and he put together spreadsheet after spreadsheet of like the, all the potential ways to like deal with their debt and like, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't deal with the debt. Maybe we should buy a house and get into real estate or, oh, maybe we should pay off our debt, but let's do the smallest step first. Oh no. What if we do the highest step first? Or what if we just invest and just pay the middle? Like all these decisions, they found themselves making no decision at all. Right. And so that's when like Jessica was like, honey, like, I think we need like an outside, like unbiased third party person just to like guide us. And so... <laughs> <laughs> and so they ended up, I worked with them and they owed about $60,000. They paid everything off in 20 months. You're kidding. 20 oh months. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my yeah. goodness gracious. So mm -hmm. that's like, I mean, 
almost a year and a half less than what the goal is typically. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. Just about a year yeah. and a half. 60, yeah. So, okay. I have so many questions about, okay, mm -hmm. what strategies did you help them employ? Yeah. Because um, you just named a few, right? Like, yeah. cause I've heard the, the argument, okay, well, if the debt is at a lower interest rate than the investment that I can make, then, you know, I'm making money yeah. on debt or whatever, you know, and it's like, I don't know if I, uh, it's time, right? Like there's time yes. spent in debt. So I'm curious, you know, what, what did you help them do with their budget? And it sounds like, yes. again, he's highly educated, you know, he's got this yeah. budget down but yes yeah, it's like we get we get uh like deer deer analysis in the paralysis yeah exactly so yeah and i'm curious too like i want to talk unpack the tips right so of, yes of all the things that i think would be really helpful to hear yeah yeah well um so based on on their experience and a lot of people's experiences i ended up creating a guide so uh Basically, I teach what's called the finance plan, where it's your step one, two, three, and four with money. So it really packs in the order of operation in which you should uh, tackle things. Mm -hmm. So I created a guide. It's called Start a Plan to Pay Off Debt and Invest. So we can link it in the show notes or whatever. And any of your listeners can kind of download that. It's 20 pages. It'll talk mm -hmm. about it. But since we're talking now, um, the the primary method that I teach to pay off debt is called the Spartan method. If you haven't heard of it, it's because I made it up. I love it. I was like, snowball at avalanche. No, okay, the Spartan. I'm the loving The Spartan it. method. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Yeah. So you probably have seen the movie 300 or heard of history, the 300 yeah. Spartans fought against this much larger Persian army. And the image that comes to my mind is that movie where it was Gerard Butler. He played the king and he was just like, Sparta, this is where we fight. And you're like, I'm not messing with that guy. Right. right. So, so most people, you don't get in debt overnight. It probably took you years to owe everything that you owe right now. So you are not going to get out of debt without a really good fight. So with that said, um, I mean, I have a two hour lesson on how to pay off debt, but this is like uh, in best money class ever. Yeah. The, the short of it is um, the Spartan method is you'll want to line up all of your debts, how much you owe on everything, the total amount, the name of it, your payment, the interest rate. Interest rate and pay all of your minimums plus an extra Spartan amount of 300 or more towards your highest interest debt each and every month. Love it. And that is fantastic. Oh, mm -hmm. love it. Oh my gosh. Just <laughs> eat away at it. It's eating away at our <laughs> lunch anyway, you know? Oh, yeah. it's fantastic. Oh man. Yes. That is great. I, I, I think just hearing how like passionate you are about it, I'm so excited to be in with you right now because <laughs> I, I wake up the same way. I'm like, man, personal finance is like, it's, it's when I the best. Exposed, yeah. When I got exposed to fire, I like, I was like there, you can calculate the date that you can become work optional. Like, I, I mean, just the idea that your money, like time value of money and then compound all these principles. When I started to, I was like late twenties when I discovered them, but I was just like, <laughs> this is literally the most miraculous thing I've ever heard about. What a, what a gift and a tool. And I'm curious. So the second article, and again, we'll link all of this because I'm sure people are very curious. Um, but, you know, one of the things the CNBC did the follow-up article on was um, mm -hmm. a grocery bill of throughout the month of what, like a hundred, yeah. under $150. So tell me, yeah, <laughs> tell me about that. Like, and can you walk me through like a day in the life of Carly D. Like, I'm curious, oh, like, 
you know, what's an average week or an average day look like? Because I think so many people are like, I don't even know how to downsize my life or where to begin or anything like that. So I'm curious about those. Things. Okay. Well, I'll start with the question about the groceries. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, uh, so CNBC, I was featured in their millennial money series and the format of the series is they look at one whole month of what one millennial spends their money on and the month that they picked. And this is actually not out of the ordinary. Um, whenever this was actually September of 2023, this is the in September of 2023, I spent $124 on all of my groceries and I primarily eat grocery, grocery food for everything. And once or twice a week, I will go out to eat for a birthday with friends or things like that. But, um, at the time in September, a couple months ago, I had no idea like, Oh, I better watch, <laughs> you know, this, it was just regular Carly life. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> Um, so I was just living in Carly world, doing my thing and my regular habit. <laughs> Little did I know, like, um, this would be on like national. It was actually the number one trending article <laughs> on Apple news. Wow. I'm like, Oh wow. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> oh if September, God. September Carly knew this. Um, <laughs> little did I know, um, but, <laughs> um, so that let's kind of back this thing up. So basically whenever I had all my debt graduated, I had the finance degree and I really wanted to learn how to truly build the wealth. So I had the degree and then I got my hands on everything I possibly could when it comes to managing your money. And across the board, all the gurus at the time were saying, if you want to get control of your spending, use cash. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, they're all saying this. There must be something to it. Mm -hmm. And so the thing was, most of the gurus said to have either jars or like envelopes. And basically you'll have like an envelope and this is your grocery envelope. And then you'll have an envelope and this is your eating out envelope and you'll have an envelope and this is for entertainment. So if you want to go to like the movies or if you want to get your haircut, that's just like the haircut cash envelope, like all these envelopes. And I'm like, that sounds a little complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to walk around with envelopes. Why don't I just get <laughs> one amount of cash and just put that cash in my wallet. And How about so, that? <laughs> you like accidentally go to the post office and you're like, which one is it? You know, I've got two envelopes. <laughs> yeah. Right, um, okay. <laughs> and yeah, so I w would go to my ATM on Fridays, like clockwork and take out $120 cash mm -hmm. and just put the cash in my wallet. <laughs> and I would get my necessities first. So that would be my groceries, gas for my car. So yes, that means I'd literally park and, um, walk in and pay them cash. Um, funny tip, funny thing is a lot of the gas stations, you'll actually get cheaper amount per gallon when you pay with cash too. Yeah. yeah I know. And that. so, <laughs> um, so so I would get groceries and then gas and then whatever was left was like, oh, let's get a happy hour with friends or, um, oh, it's something. I have a date coming up. Let me go to Ross and get a new shirt or something. Right. <laughs> um, treat and yourself. treat myself. Yeah. Nine ninety nine shirt or I don't know, whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> so anyways, um, basically after all the years of doing weekly cash and all that, I actually designed a financial day planner, which Love is it. a day planner and financial plan in one. Mm -hmm. And basically I look at what's going on for my, my week in my life. So like, for example, tomorrow night, I have a comedy show that I'm going to with my friends. And then, um, there's going to be next week, there's going to be Christmas parties and white elephants and all the things. So I kind of map out my week and then based on what's going on in my week, I'll plan my meals around that. So the top secret tip 
of how I spent $124 was just having that grocery list. So I create my grocery list just based on what's going on in my life. And the tip is to make a list and check it twice. Mm -hmm. So Santa Claus is onto something. Um, yeah. Basically make your list before you hit the grocery store and think through all of the meals you're going to have breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, desserts, and check it once. So before you hit the grocery store, literally like look at your recipes, which ingredients you need, double check. You have everything on that list and then check it again. When you're actually at the grocery store, let me see if I can show you. Yeah. Um, so, um, and we can link uh, to your your planner too because I know it, yeah like, love it so it's a planner and so based on what's going on in my life then I'll have my grocery list I bring it to the grocery store and I check it twice basically I highlight it mm -hmm. and I only get the items on the list because sixty to seventy percent of purchases at a grocery store are impulse buys yep. so only getting those items. Cause you already checked it, you know, like this is legitimately all that I need. <laughs> right. So only get those items and that that's the secret. Just have that grocery list. So well, hopefully I that think, kind of explains. Yes. Yeah, it does. I'm curious, like, um, what, what's your go-to meal? Like if you, if you had like, cause I know holidays are around the corner and people are probably like, overwhelmed with spending and all of that, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, is there a specific meal that you have just found like a tried and true staple for cost effectiveness, health, nutrition, and easy to make? Yeah. So I, uh, when they wrote the article uh, during that, that week, I, I had made a salmon rice bowl. And people and were like, there's no way, right? <laughs> They were like, what, did she like go to Alaska and like catch the salmon herself? <laughs> like, um, she's going to tell us how she did it. <laughs> and oh, no, so, uh, but yeah, I tend to look online for recipes and then I find ways to frugalize them. Mm -hmm. And so I do make sure and follow best money class ever. I'll show you these recipes. So for example, the salmon rice bowl initially came with like cucumbers and sesame seeds and like five different spices and yeah. this kind of sauce. And, and so I just made it very simple. It was like rice, salmon with salt and pepper, mm -hmm. olive oil, um, avocado and carrots. And Perfect. there we go. Sounds fantastic and super nutritious. Mm -hmm. oh all the healthy fats, my brain feels like more cognitively alert just thinking about it. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Salmon and avocado. Wow. Okay. That I think is such a relief probably for a lot of people to hear because we do, we go on, on these recipe websites and we see these very like, it's like, dude, I don't have goji berries or like, you know, whatever it is, you know, it's just, you know yeah, like I'm never going to use this again. And there's only like one teaspoon of it that I actually need. So it's like, eh, yeah, salt and pepper will do. Everybody's permission right here that you can dress down the recipe and it still tastes just as good. And your budget will tasted really it. amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm loving it. Okay. You know, I, there's probably so much more we could talk about, but I feel like I'm curious. We'll wrap, we'll wrap up this session. I would love to have you back on, or at least, you know, do follow-up check-ins. Cause I think, you know, it's so nice to have a personal finance girly yeah. um, in, in my life. And also somebody who's also in Austin. So you get part of the Austin culture. Yes. Um, I'm curious, you know, if there, if there was one key takeaway from, all of your experience with personal finance, um, you know, for listeners, what, what would that be? Mm, yeah. So you can always turn things around. Don't wait for the higher income. Don't wait for that pay raise, that promotion, start a plan now. Mm -hmm. 
uh, start a plan to pay off debt and invest now. Time is truly money. The best thing you could possibly do is get started. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, Carly, thank you so, so much. Yes. For and I felt like the time just went by too fast, but um, yeah, thank you again. I really appreciate having you on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It was so fun. Yeah. And so for those of you tuning in next week, I'm going to have Kyle Warren. He's going to be talking about uh, crypto and NFT, and we're going to have a conversation about that. So if you're curious about it, feel free to tune in and feel free to send in any questions that you might have. Um, And we'll be sure to post all of Carly's links to her Instagram, her class, to her planner, um, and the articles she's been featured in as well. Um, So be sure to check those out in the description, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you.